We have a tremendous opportunity uh, in Cuba uh, to expand uh, exports of soybeans and rice and poultry at some point. They in turn have a tremendous opportunity to import into the U.S. organic production. Trade must be a two-way street. Last week, USDA Chief Tom Vilsack hosted a Cuban agricultural delegation in his home state of Iowa. The historic event gave the group a glimpse into agribusiness diversity in a region that leads the U.S. in several farm production sectors. The ambassador wanted this guy to go to Virginia. I said, no, he's coming to Iowa. Thank you. The reciprocal visit follows the first American presidential trip to the Caribbean island nation since 1928. There, both countries signed a memorandum of understanding to collaborate on agricultural research and ideas. In Iowa, dignitaries saw a high-tech greenhouse at sea giant DuPont Pioneer, where staff stressed the importance of research and genetics for improved yields. In the past, Cuba has been relatively isolated from crop technologies like genetically modified seeds. But a stopover at fifth generation farmer Aaron Lehman's organic operation offered one way Cuba's farmers could use past seclusion to their advantage. If we have a certified organic crop, we will typically receive um, an extra 50 percent to even 200 percent. Lehman has been converting some of his farm's conventional acreage to organic over the past decade. And while the three-year regulatory transition period can come with a financial pinch, a steady 15 percent annual increase in U.S. demand for organic products makes the move worthwhile. The reality is that there are not very many families like Aaron's. So we are having to import. Por lo cual tenemos que importar. But relations with the communist nation are still subject to a U.S. embargo, which has been in place since 1962. Obama has called the law a Cold War relic, but the chief executive is legally powerless to cut trade sanctions. As lawmakers contemplate the issue on their own timetable, Vilsack says USDA has authorized the use of commodity checkoff dollars for education and training to continue momentum. I'm optimistic and hopeful that the Congress will at some point in time uh, lift the embargo. Since 2001, a diplomatic defrost has allowed limited U.S. farm and food exports to Cuba, but the market is volatile. According to the U.S.-Cuba Trade and Economic Council, agricultural shipments to Cuba peaked in 2008 at $700 million. Meager by comparison, 2015's $170 million total has been attributed to uncertainty and increased global competition. That's 20 years old? Yes. We tried to take care of it. 50 years. 50 years. 50 years. 50 years. 50 years. <laughs> they know how to take care of a tractor. U.S. officials say untangling credit barriers would allow Cubans to purchase new items like American tractors many of which they currently own, are as long in the tooth as the island's well-known classic cars. We believe that the, the, there are many areas of agriculture in which we lo have nos, common views. Lo que nos resta es la colaboración. And what is left to be done is to deepen our collaboration. Cuba's agricultural minister echoed the sentiments of his American counterpart both on the farm and at Iowa State University. As the delegation explored the institution's commitment to research and business growth while educating the next generation of farm leaders. A culmination of knowledge and discipline rounded out the groundbreaking day at a nearby ethanol plant. Lincoln Way Energy board members explained how Iowa's biofuel production model creates multiple use products, jobs in rural areas, and helps the auto industry comply with mandates on fuel economy. We've used this corn, just like a barrel of crude, we take it apart. And we have food and fuel. And the best way to get to higher octane fuels is blending more of that. 
while USDA lays the groundwork for robust agricultural trade with Cuba. Critics contend the former U.S. adversary has a plethora of other issues to iron out before normalized relations are fully realized. There will always be differences, but they don't necessarily have to prevent us from having a relationship. Abraham Lincoln once said that the best way to eliminate an enemy is to make a friend. I don't know of anything more powerful in making friendships and eliminating past challenges than agriculture. For Market to Market, I'm Josh Bittner.